to take a drawing that you've made as a series of commands and turn it into a function. And the very simplest way to do this is to type the word function and then the name of the function. So I'm going to call mine draw face. Then we have parentheses, which contain any arguments we have. Um, right now, I'm going to have no arguments. And then curly brackets or braces. Um, and you'll notice, actually, let me just type that again so you can see. When I type that, draw face, my editor, when the minute I type a left curly bracket, the editor puts a right one in because those always come in pairs. And I always hit return. The stuff that's between the open curly bracket and the end curly bracket is what we call the body of the function. And I'm going to go ahead and move all of this drawing into the body of the function. That should get indented. If it doesn't, I can select it and hit tab. Um, let's see if that looks pretty. Perfect. That all got indented. So this is now a function. Um, the editor also makes it easy to collapse a function. So I don't, if I don't want to look at it, I can just collapse the whole thing. When you have lots of functions, this can be handy. So this now I have a function called draw face. If I run my code, now nothing happens. Why is that? A function is a set of commands you can run later, or you could potentially run over and over and over. So I'm going to go ahead and call draw face now. If I call draw face, now I have my drawing again. Now, what was the point of that? There's sort of two points, um, or well, more. One is we could delay calling draw face to a future point in time. So um, we'll do more of this later, but JavaScript has a concept called an event listener. Um, so I can add an event listener to my canvas, that's this blue thing, and say when the user clicks, and here I say call draw face. So I tell it, hey, whenever there's a click, draw a face. So in this case, it won't draw a face until they click. Um, and I can actually see a little mistake in my code that um, I set the color to red just once I drew the mouth, and I never set it back to black. So when I click it the second time, it draws the eyes red too. Um, that's like a little error that I made. Um, so that's an example of delayed running of the function. The other nice thing about a function that you can do is you can introduce the same way we had variables here. I can put parameters, which are variables that change when we call a function. So um, let's say that I want to make it possible to change the position of the left eye. I can take that left eye, and instead of using let, I put it inside the parentheses. I can also put an equal sign here, which is a, called the default value. So now if I run this, oops, draw face. Oh, I didn't call it. If I call it, it will run exactly the same way. But I'm allowed to put in a different value. So let me put in the value 80. And now it centered my left eye at 80 instead. So I could potentially put in um, both left and right eye here, for example. And then when I draw it, I could draw this at 80, 100. And my two eyes are going to be super awkwardly on top of each other. Um, there we go. I've got lots of options. Now, putting each of these variables into the function argument is probably not what I want to do. So I'm actually going to just hit undo a bunch and put those back. Um, because it doesn't really make sense to make a creature that's got a left eye in one place and a right eye in a radically different place. Um, so what might make more sense would be to, let's say, just define an x and a y. Um, and maybe I think of the x and the y as the center, right? So if I did x and y as um, 250 and 100 might be my default, I could then take these and define them in terms of my x and y. So this would be, for example, x minus 100, and this would be x plus 100. 
and my y would just be y. And in that case, if I said draw face um, 300, 300, it will move the eyeballs over. We'll notice that I forgot to move the smile. So I could probably take these. Here's a 250, 250. And I could say let smile x equal x. Let smile y equal y plus 150. And then I can change this to smile x, smile y. And now the whole thing, in fact, moves when I move it. Um, in my case, it moved all the way off the canvas. So that was too big. There it moved. And I can now move my drawing around by changing these variables. So that's now pretty handy. Um, this gets even more handy if we use it with an event listener. So for example, I could say canvas add event listener. Um, let's say mouse move. Um, now this is kind of cool. The event has a mouse X. All right, and now that's going to tell me. There we go. Now I created, I should probably fix my little bug with the color here. CTX uh, fill style equals black. Now it moves the guy around. The last thing I probably want to do is just erase the screen. Now I have a face that moves as I move my mouse. So I just took my very simple function and turned it into a little animation. Um, it would also be possible, instead of moving the whole face, to just move the pupils so that the pupils move towards the eye. Um, lots of options that I would have with this code.